this uh, the first slide. That uh, I, I see it here, so at least I can start reading them. So the title says, "Life: Your Business into Functioning Events." So very quickly, my name is Maciej Świderski. I'm an independent software engineer and consultant, working very much with workflows, as you could oh, would see if uh, everything would work, then you would see workflows. Uh, I'm the creator of the Automatica project, which I was planning to show as a demonstration. Not going to happen. And uh, occasionally blog and tweet about software development and workflows. Yeah, it's maybe, maybe I will just do that. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, let me just try to make it just that uh, presenter view. We don't want that. I don't know how to see this. Maybe you can turn it off. See, that's the first. Nah, it's on. Let's do it like this. No, you change the sign. Events. Uh, so that's the data contract. Uh, in general, it's about having meaningful data and well structured and well defined. Uh, in general, to make sure that we change information between services and functions, we need to have some kind of data, right? Because in the end, everything that that we care about, uh, while executing particular services or application, is the data. So it, it makes sense to rely on standards, and in this particular case, cloud event standard, that allows us to define the structure, the envelope of the event, and at the same time, binding. Uh, binding is a way how to express the event as part of the particular transport protocol, such as HTTP, CAPTA, uh, MQTP, and so on and so forth. So that what we exchange is meaningful and brings value to the consumer. Oh, wrong slide. Functions. Functions are the business logic pieces, right? So it's usually but it's again meaningful from the meaningful. But execute our business logic, but small so, so called and, uh, in general should be self contained, meaning that they should not rely on it externally, should have everything that they need to execute on uh, data that it gets, data that they produce is a trigger for another set of uh, invocations. So, they should be uh, calling one another. More? Okay, let's see. Success. All right, and now you can see it slightly different. So when it comes to functions and servers, it's quite.
from the BBMN, this looks essentially the same. It has slightly different types of boxes, maybe some colors, maybe some annotation, uh, small icons, and so on and so forth, but essentially does the exact same thing. The only thing that you have on top of it is that you have the extra metadata that you need to make sure that it executes, right? But again, this is with use case that we want to execute. And this is how it looks like from the function perspective. It is sliced into those functions. First and foremost, you as a developer are in control actually what a given function consists of. Means how many activities, which activities it has, and so on and so forth. You can see those encircled uh, uh, activities are the composition of the function. So the first one is to, to validate, and then you can see that one that is not encircled is actually done that on purpose to show it that it actually it by design is said that it will join the previous function. So the notify uh, invalid data. You can see this. No, you don't see it. The one with the circle around it is simply joining the previous one, which is the validating data. Because it doesn't make sense to send an event just to get another event to send another event, right? Because they're not going to do anything than just notification. So that's why we can simply say, okay, just follow what's already executing. So you can then define a part of the workflow that becomes. Um, function. So then control really what set of elements actually are meaningful from a business perspective to become a function. It's not going to happen. But we would see it locally, how it runs, how it slides, how it shows you what functions it is, what data uh, it has. And then we would run it since it's DevConf, so it's Red Hat. So we would run it on Red Hat OpenShift with OpenShift Serverless to make sure that it actually communicates nicely with uh, the native broker. So essentially, this is what would happen. So the user would essentially just publish an event, say, okay, I want to register a user. That's a cloud event that would say the data model of it, and one of the most critical parts of the cloud event is the attribute called type, which is essentially specifying what is the type of the event, and this uh, attribute is used for uh, by the key native broker to actually route those messages. So if you recall that I previously said that when we slice the functions, we automatically will generate the key native trigger, that's essentially the link. So it uses the type attribute of the cloud event to say, okay, if you have an event with that type, route it to this service. And that's essentially what it would happen. And then the functions themselves, as you can see, there are bunch of functions inside the service, even though it's deployed as a single container, it will have a bunch of endpoints that will react to those events. As soon as, soon as it gets, it wraps a particular event based on type attributes, look at the payload of it, process that, creates a bunch of one or more events as the output, which again follows the same specification of cloud events, setting what is the next type, so it knows that based on the workflow definition, so it knows what type of functions are following and can simply send those events based on the outcome of the function. If we look back here, for instance, when the, the first circle goes in, we validate the data. So it knows that it's either valid or invalid, right? At that time, it knows what are the paths in the workflow that can follow. If it's invalid, it knows that it will simply go to the invalid state and that's it. But if it knows that is going to is valid and is going to uh, create the uh, generate the username and password. It will simply send an event saying, "Okay, I'm creating an event with generate username and password, and set it to the payload." That is sent to the broker. Broker then receives that information, looks at the cloud event type attribute. Okay, who is going to deal with that? Okay, I will just route it there. Then it gets that uh, event process it and it follows until so the good thing with that is that even though it might sound weird at first that it sends events to itself but that actually enables it to scale because it send can based on the load and different auto scaler uh, strategies it can automatically to scale multiple instances of your replica of your service uh, multiple replicas of your service, and they start processing those events individually. 
the interesting part is that the same uh, the, the event for the same instance of the workflow I mean this is true, this is true a function flow can be processed by, by different uh, replicas because there are two different ways of how to deal with persistence in this uh, particular scenario is that in this case it says that all states meaning the data and everything that is relevant to executing further functions goes with the event so essentially the persistence is your event everything that goes through the broker is the complete state so any instance any replica of your service can process the next function if that is not the case because you have individual things that are important to have meaning that you keep internal state you have a sensitive data you have uh, files physical files or a big set of data big volumes there you don't want to send them over events because they are not always feasible so it makes sense to actually turn them down and keep it in, in the storage that is uh, for instance i don't know apache cassandra or uh, dynamo db mongo db relational database and so on and so forth depending on which uh, backend uh, data store you want to use you might simply just push it there and then each replica will be capable of finding that because every single event that is sent across the function invocation carries two information one is the type that i already, already described and the other is the source source attribute of the cloud event uh, represents who actually published the event and in case of a workflow as a function flow it's always identifier of the workflow instance so that means that if you receive that, you can correlate that ba based on the source uh, uh, identifier of it. You can correlate to the backend store. Okay, give me the last state of it. I can then resume it. I have the full data set, even though the, uh, the event that uh, I received has only the small information, but I can resume from that point because I know what to do now. All right. So. In addition to that, we had the, as you can see, the small box in the uh, in the corner there. We had the invocation of REST APIs as well, out of the workflow to communicate with the uh, user repository, which was the Swagger Pet Store, because why not? So we could invoke those functions and they simply send a request over the REST API to make sure that the user exists. And if it didn't exist, then we could register it. But if it existed, we ended there. So you could see here, the small error handlers attached to the get user and the register user those are to deal with REST API uh, response rate that's the contract that the Swagger API has the Swagger Pet Store API has that if you query for a user by username it returns 200 if it's found and 404 if it's not found since it's HTTP 404 is considered an error code that's why we kind of treat it as an error and then based on the invocation of that we can simply route it to the uh, register user. The register user has the option to react to the internal server er errors as well to deal with that as well. So, we kind of bring it a little bit without it. But add uh, a few notes on what it is built with. That would be more relevant if you see if you would see the demo but if you didn't see the demo that is less relevant but uh, it was the workflow definition was created with the flowchart like model with the bpmn format bro uh, process model notation backed by the uh, project which again is not uh, implement the workflow as a flow relies on quarkus and microprovost specification underneath to of the execution uh, what is important as well is using the sub project of Quarkus called uh, Quarkus Funky uh, that allows you to run functions uh, that are agnostic from the cloud provider so still represents functions in an agnostic way but then the bindings like for instance you can bind to a Google Cloud function to AWS Lambda to Knative Eventing to Azure function. So you essentially write it once, but then you configure it differently to connect to a different runtime uh, on the server. And you would see that it was compiled to a native as well. So it's, uh, I don't know if you heard about the native compilation of Java programs that's based on uh, GlobalVM. 
So that essentially helps out uh, with uh, the serverless where you need to scale up and down quickly and, and uh, quite often. So that allows you to have a very fast startup in a number of uh, uh, yeah, 20, 30 milliseconds uh, plus a low memory footprint. Based on the demonstration I was preparing for, uh, OpenShift reported that it was around 40 megabytes with full container running. So quite low when it comes to the program and packet as a container images, again, a simple deployment model, a single container with all the functions embedded. In this particular scenario, we had a very good job. But uh, I've been running already all the containers that had one with functions also. Because it's not that all of a sudden you have everything in that workflow, single workflow. No, you start uh, applying uh, process compositions where you start breaking down workflow systems and then you have the hierarchy of them. Workflow as a function flow, flow calls that use case as well. It knows which subprocess to involve. It uh, keeps track of on level of the hierarchy it is and so on and so forth. And last but not least, it was supposed to be deployed to Kubernetes with Kinetis. It was not. I, I mean, it was just before in front of the room, but uh, yeah, it didn't happen. But if someone is and, and look at that, not on the small screen, but at least you will see it. Uh, so that's the, the backbone of the invocation of functions and cloud events as the exchange information back and forth. Since the time is running out, the last thing to leave you out a few references that you can take a look at more details. The QR code will take you to the automatic web where you can look at the different uh, use cases. One of them is workflow as a function flow, but there is workflow as a function and workflow as a service as well, or workflow as Kubernetes object as well. That's another use case that you can implement with workflows as well. And few links, cloud events, the Kubernetes, Automatico, and Quartus. With that, thank you so much for questions. Although we had the questions for the first 20 minutes, so I guess it's a, we run out of questions. But yes, if you have any, shoot. Just don't ask why it didn't work. <laughs> All right, so thanks a lot. And uh, hopefully the next sessions will be much better than this one. Thanks a lot.